Would you like to know how to rig a two kilometer long high line? Check out how we're pulling this line across on this episode of How Not to High Line. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and I am in asbestos in Quebec, Canada. And today we are going to pull a two kilometer long high line all the way over there. I'm really, really happy to see you all here. It's been like months and months of preparation a little bit. This is a very, very special uh, event. It's nothing like all other uh, Highline gatherings. Um, the mission is to uh, use this mine to give it another purpose. This mine was used for about 100 years to mine asbestos. And when, uh, you know, asbestos is very dangerous mineral to use, uh, and we all know it. And so when the mine was closed, um, a lot of jobs here were lost, a lot of uh, people had to move out of the city and uh, leave this big mine here uh, without any use. There was a lot of news in the press about how bad it was to have this in their backyard. And you know, when your city, the name of your city is always in the press with negative news, it's kind of a, it's, it's hard for you to be proud of where you're from. And they were always trying to find new ways to bring uh, new people, new people, new ed energetic people with projects especially around this mine because this is the heart of the city basically and uh, Danik, for the owner of the microbrewery that's on the other side of the street he is from here and he really has his city in his heart and he wants to see nice things happen and he was talking with my, my dad uh, they were brewing beer together and trying to brainstorm on how they could use this mine and my dad was like, well, my son does highlining. Maybe we should, he should put a highline in there. <laughs> and, uh, and then it took like one year that he was like pecking on me and always begging me to come and to visit and to check it out. And then in the end, like after a year, we came with Julian and Camille was there and Felix and, and Max was there. <laughs> and a bunch of us came and we visited the mine and we just understood the size of it. And we saw also that there were very little possibilities unless a huge line that would kind of grow across it. And, and so we contacted them and Julian and I, we uh, talked with the city and then we decided to pitch for the longest. We said, we're gonna come and, and put the two kilometer long high line in your mind. But what I want us to understand with all of that is that us being here is an invitation from the city for us to be here and to make it shine, you know? So we are here, we're gonna put up a two kilometer high line, it's gonna be epic, everybody's gonna have fun, we're gonna have our two midlines here. But everything we do, all of our actions, we have to think, does it, does it help to build a positive image of the city? So I'm gonna summarize here, uh, kind of now that I've been here about a week, how the rigging basically goes, how they set this stuff up. All the people right now on the team are getting ready for their positions and getting their stuff ready. We got uh, cap stands for that side, a secret weapon, they call it, which is a giant cap stand custom made for this side and huge telephone poles that you can see right there uh, that are gonna hold the anchor up so it can clear this mine because this mine is very stair-steppy and a lot of work has been put in so far. The anchors are built. And right now, we're gonna pull the line across and we're gonna take you on the journey of what that takes. Well, while we wait for the teams to get in place, let me explain the anchor real quick. It's these concrete blocks that had to be positioned very carefully because uh, this C channel had to be lined up. And we got two bolts per block. And down here, uh, made uh, a weld right here in order for it to have uh, an I-beam shape and so it doesn't bend. Uh, it'll just crush the concrete right here. And then we have a span set coming off of it to this rigging plate and obviously uh, another span set here. Um, just one rigging plate and it's going to, this is going to basically hold all the tension. Now um, there's going to be adjustments and stuff going on here. But this is basically the anchor. These are not going to move. Um, it does put quite a bit of force on the first bolt but that first bolt is plenty strong and it just keeps the whole thing as one unit. So it is heavy enough that it doesn't move. We don't need all six bolts to equalize here, but um, yeah, I don't think we're moving this thing. All right, Matt, all right. Uh, explain 
explain your anchor and what your anchor even goes to right now? Uh, so this is just a guide wire anchor. It's four blocks of concrete that have a rebar placed through them. Uh, and then there's uh, like individual strands, not a classic BFK um, going to, so it just sort of equalizes better, uh, supposedly. And uh, yeah, just two ropes sharing each carabiner. Individualized Sorry. strands with figure eights. The homemade. Uh, oh yeah, homemade rigging plate. plate. Uh, powder coated with rust. Yeah. <laughs> and it gave, it gave it some good texture and color, you know. Yeah. And then it goes to another steel locker that's going to go to the single rope. Uh, well, I think it's going to be doubled actually. No, no, it's going to be a single rope. Uh, if we have extra, we'll double it. It goes to a sort of like prussic wrapped uh, um, span set that then the other side of the span set goes to the other thing that is exactly like this. The other. And what are these? Blocks. What is this intended for? This is just a guy wire to keep the the thing from shaking too much. So this side is only going to be about four meters up. Yeah, this side is not going to be so high because if you walk over there, you can see there's a drop off right on the other side of the hill. And we're not we're not super worried about level. Do we even know, Matt, what level is? No, we don't. I've never checked it. But it's irrelevant. Yeah, we. we this length. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because of the sag and everything, it doesn't even look. How like. much? How many meters of sag? It's about sixty meters of sag. Okay. From the total length. So if we were five meters off level, even, even <laughs> 20 wouldn't look like. The webbing that we're using for this project is the Y2K webbing and it has uh, normal sewing loops of course uh, on the ends. But then right here is where they attach the backups and they put a quick link between these two loops and then put the uh, backup webbing in there. The backup webbing I believe is 53 meters and the main webbing is 50 meters so it's actually custom made to be used in this system. They actually don't make Y2K webbing longer than 50 meters. Um, and this backpack you can see here uh, is full of, let's see here, from A to B, 750 meters of webbing in this bag. We have a stack of bags right over there. And this is flaked in such a way that it's taped on the shoulder straps right there. So they know what side's top and what side's bottom. And B for bottom, T for top. And it's, uh, pretty well organized. They had a huge taping party here for the last two days and uh, everything had to be triple checked to make sure every quick link was uh, locked off, every pin was pulled out of the webbing and everything was super flat. So um, it's ready to be pulled over. And then we just tape like one side so that uh, we don't end up cross-loading it. So it's really just for the webbing to stay in place. Last year we had nine and this year we have eight. Um, and it should work very well with the medium uh, selectivity rings. Is that what you're using is medium selectivity rings? I think we'll have the big bomber rings as well but also the medium selectivity. So what happens when you tape it this way? So this one is a connection from the main line to the next piece of main line. How many wraps are you doing with the electric tape? I think about three, maybe sometimes four. Okay. And can you put the fiber tape directly on top? And we, yeah, we put the fiber tape directly on top. We're not exactly sure, but we had the tape kind of roll and not stick very well and I don't know if it's something to do with the humidity and the heat here but we found this was the quickest solution to keep taping and get something that works and slides very well. Nice. And yeah. Nice. All right. And how, and what's your spacing? I do between eight and ten of these. Okay. I don't know, a bit more than the meter. We want, we're aiming for four to five tapes per 50 meters. Okay. And you have 40 sections, so that's 200 tapes. Yeah, I guess the way. <laughs> yeah. 200 tapes is It's not that bad. It's probably it's like a, bad, no. yeah. But you gotta make sure everything's super flat. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
forgot to count this one. I think that's about right. <laughs> So slider electric tape, three or four wraps. I like that with the fiber tape over. And in a way, it might be nice because I think it makes the fiber tape a little further from the line. Fiber tape's so strong that maybe this is nicer to have directly contact in the webbing than yeah. having something that's stronger and sharper. But it's all, all kind of experiment. So there's these little frillies on the bottom of the right here. So we like tape those so that they don't snag the leash. Yeah. And then we do big spacing. I like doing that so I can see see it. And then yeah. we super duper tape. And we like are supposed to maintain tension as much as possible for this part. So it doesn't uh, go, rip it go back. Do a little more right there. Okay. And then do it back. Yeah, I'm gonna wait after. Just on top of it? Because oh, okay. Yeah. Like, tight. Yeah. So, like, you have to make sure you wrench tighten the. Uh, oh my gosh. No open rapid links. Why? <laughs> I guess they're I weak they're so when you don't screw them in or something. I hear they're strong. They're, ma they're metal. They're bomber. Yeah. They're bomber. Okay. Um, so. All right, everybody. All hands in the middle. How much webbing do you guys have? Two hundred. Two hundred two. So four hundred meters. Wow. Uh, it's not too heavy. That's bigger than I've ever rigged. <laughs> <laughs> but why? Why two K? It's pretty. Why two K? Like light. Not heavy. Light. Yeah. Light. Yeah. You don't pad your webbing before smashing it with rocks, Danny. Sometimes <laughs> you gotta go a little rough. <laughs> All right. So our webbing starts here, and then this rope will be pulled. Uh, up so we don't drag it through all that crap. Or has to stay closer. She's got connections. Wow, they're re Does it get really steep after this? Pardon? Yeah. All right, so we've come halfway down, which is where I'm at halfway down right now, and uh, they're hiking the rest of the webbing down to the lake. There's two rebar hammered into the edge of the water, and uh, the boat team is pulling over webbing and connecting those water bottles to it as they go, and it looks like at every 50 meter mark is what they're doing. There's already a rope at the base, at the water line over there, and because it's so steep and so hard to manage the webbing on that side that they're going to pull the webbing up with a capstan, a small capstan that they brought over there, not the giant secret weapon we have on this side. Once they pull the webbing up uh, to their side, they'll fix it like a normal static side, side B, and then they're gonna start to pull it up this way. And that's where, while we stay here, is to help hold this webbing up off the rocks. Um, we're trying to try and do as little damage as possible and then uh, they're only going to tension it just a little bit so the boat can come back and take all the water bottles off so no one has to line slide two kilometers with 20 bottles hanging off their harness okay so everyone's in position right now we're basically anywhere the slack line is rubbing the rocks we've got lifted up the boat is going back you probably can't see it from here and removing all the water jugs uh, the secret machine, the big cap stand on the A side, the one we're going to tension with. It's all, everything's already installed. Everything's uh, already in the Kootenai carriage, which is on that pulley, so we can go up and down with it. Um, 
but they have to capstan the rope that goes from the B-side anchor down to the lake because there's no way to keep the webbing off the rocks there. So as they pull that up, it'll keep it off the rocks because there'll be tension added as they do it. Um, but that's only going to add like a portion of the tension we need. And then we use the big, 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 big cap stand we have on this side. And we're actually almost done. This actually isn't that hard of a process. We were a short 50 meters or 100 meters when they were taking the webbing across the lake. Um, so they just robbed Peter and paid Paul and we pulled this one and they added something on that side. So, but um, I mean, overall, the magic is in the prep, just like most high lines. So, um, I mean, they taped for three days and planned this for six months. So this part of the process is just uh, going through the motions. So hopefully this goes well. Okay, so there's 300 meters between me and the next person down there. Uh, <laughs> And they have to remove all the water bottles still. Uh, the sun is shining through the clouds and the rain right now. <laughs> How's it and feel? It's fucking heavy. It's fucking heavy because it's all so wet. <laughs> How you doing, Liz? <laughs> uh, at least the sun will come out soon. Yeah, and the after we're wet. Oh, the view is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's raining so far. Oh shit. They just got the last bottle off and the line goes all the way from here to the boat and it's just on on a shoulder and a knee. <laughs> and on Liz. Liz, you're so strong. Now the, the rope's too wet in the capstan to actually pull it up properly. So, I guess we're going to have to be here all night. Matt, what is this? That's the, that's the solution. <laughs> that's, a, that's a secret weapon. That's a prototype for any rigging issues we had last year about tensioning, about um, down rigging it as soon as possible in case of pretty bad weather. Dos, tres. <laughs> so that's the slack machine. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> so that's uh, that's a couple of weeks of work on trying to build this. Do you have a portable version? No. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're <laughs> a chopper. What a chopper. I would add like many hundreds of hours of work. Matt uh, designed all of this. Uh, in AutoCAD and designed every single piece in this apart from a couple he bought like the engine he did not build the engine oh. but uh, <laughs> everything here was custom made and welded by hand yeah every ugly weld was made by me and every pretty weld was made by Renault yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what it makes what it does there's there are wraps like in a capstan winch but the problem is that a capstan winch the rope rubs against each other loop, right? So it doesn't go over itself because it's thick. With the line, it will go over and over and over again. So it will make just one stack of webbing, which we don't want. We want to separate the webbing. So I will avoid all technical, like kind of blah, blah, blah around it. But we managed to make two drums separating each turn within like the distance of the two drums. So. It runs around it and then it comes it comes out free on the other side without any tension. Like the regular capstan winch. That's yeah. 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 Happy. Yeah. This is just a different game of tensioning. So let me explain the secret weapon real quick. It's basically a giant cap stand. And this keeps all of the separate webbing, um, all the webbing separated. And we have to manage the backup and pull uh, it tight, which is why we are so far back from the anchor. Now, we have 50 meters between the pole and the cap stand here. In order to pull all the slack out of the backup, uh, wind it up, 
tape it in place so it becomes one unit and then run it through the machine. And if we have to de-rig on Thursday, which is four days from now, in order for a storm to pass, uh, this, their strategy is that they can de-rig it in a few hours and re-rig it sim pretty simply uh, in order to not lose the webbing and continue the festival. Now, uh, we will have to do the, we will have to scrunch up the backup uh, and tape it as one unit for 40 pieces uh, if we have to do that. It is a little bit of work, but um, it is the most consistent they can get with this machine. Hey Matt, what happens when three riggers are bored? Uh, you build what's called a post-apocalyptic backup. And that's what we did here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our main anchor, okay. or anchors. And and this, this by the way, makes uh, that redundant. We backed it up directly. So. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, like we have to be here watching the line, watching the anchor anyway. So we had some materials and we went back to that rebar and made a sliding X and then a soft release and then some spans. <laughs> and then you take it to the terminal shackles of the line. And yeah. So in case we have a post-apocalyptic failure, <laughs> we, we're still connected. Yeah. yeah. So we basically got the lineup yesterday, but uh, we're at anchor side B, finishing up this side. And we realized that this second pole, the pole we're not using to pull on for our anchor, has a lot of tat, a lot of old metal electrical stuff on top. And it's hanging right over the high line. And so we're gonna do what any good Canadian would do and cut it down. Good thing every Canadian's a lumberjack. Uh, the problem is we don't want it to fall on our already existing setup. And of course, obviously not the high line. So we're going to throw a rope up top and we're going to tension it. We're gonna cut a little. We're gonna tension it. Then we're gonna fucking run when it starts to fall. But we gotta make sure it falls down the hill or at least uh, away from the slack line. We kind of have to remove this one anchor side, the stabilizer, in order to prevent damage to it. But yeah, this is, uh, this is something that it started with yesterday and going in the wind and moving and they realized it was something that needed to be taken care of today. So uh, just little details, little details that we normally deal with when we have high lines, uh, except this is bigger and so the details matter more. Anyways, how often do you use a chainsaw to uh, detail your anchors? You look stressed. No, it's just the morning, you know. You don't cut a tree down every day? This is every not a morning? tree. This was a tree it, a long time ago. It was a tree. Yeah. It's not the wood, it's not the cutting of the wood that scares me. It's the, the metal dangling above your head as we cut it. That it is, well, parts of it are already on I the I think ground. it's dangling over your head when... Yeah, you know, it's not hanging. It's not dangling over mine. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. It all works out in the end. It always does. It's just scary. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> I'm more scared of this than like anything else we're doing here. Yeah, I guess so, right? Coming back. I feel like yeah, if we just get a rope over the top of it. You have a good pull that way. As long as nothing breaks and falls off on me, then it should all just go as planned. Yeah. Right? As long as we're pulling the top that way and we cut it right. Hey, there's no way it could fall the other way if you have four kilonewtons pulling on the top. You got your dyno? Yeah. Dyno one. <laughs> dyno two. <laughs> Don't they max out at like half a kilonewton? <laughs> but together, I get one. Wow. So what are you going to do with the van? It's going to apply tension to the top of the post while, we, while I try and cut it <laughs> to make sure it goes the one direction. <laughs> what, are you gonna, what are you planning on doing when it starts to go? <laughs> Get to a safe you gotta, place. You thinking about turning off the chainsaw before you run or after? No, you hit the brake on it and then just go. Like the kill switch is secondary, yeah. you know? That's what I would do. Yeah. Fight, you know, how to really, use chainsaws. We'll see how fast things happen, you know. Sometimes things go happen fast, sometimes things go pretty slow. When it goes slow, you can play it cool, but when things go fast, 
Nobody plays it cool. Yeah, I, when I start cutting, he's gonna, I'm gonna communicate. When I look up, tell him to go. <laughs> Go, 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 go! Ah! Oh shit! Oh shit! Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I'm so happy we did that good. Let's check out my cut. <laughs> Look at that, it didn't hit this. No, no, no we nailed it. It bounced guys. back, that's what it did. <laughs> we nailed it. All right, everyone. Oh, good. Oh, God, I'm that's sweating so idea. much. <laughs> uh, we have been watching the weather constantly, so we know if something's coming, so we have a full four or six hour window in order to swap the line out with rope. What is this, Liz? This is the rope that gets sent across if we have to do a fast D-rig due to weather or basically just weather. So this is our D-rig rope. We replaced the high line with this rope. So this is 2.2 2 .2 kilometers of yep. rope. And just figure eights connecting the, the ends? Figure eights connecting every end. 2.2 kilometers. It doesn't seem like that much in here. Oh my god, it's like a foot. Oh, is it like a super board. deep? It's deep. Oh my god. It's a long rope. <laughs> no, that, wow, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> Never he, mind. He Never mind. Personally, stacked all of it into the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the idea is that we would send this line across and then re-rig the high line. Exactly. Yes. But what about actual de-rig? Because you guys just do that with a knife each time, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's how they de-rig all big lines these days. Um, do you sure. use the rope and then drop the rope? Do you drop something? No. No, the, yesterday they, they were building the, the, the big wheel. Yeah. It's going to be the friction uh, thing. And just lower it? Yep. No, we will swipe the, the webbing with the stack machine and we will feed the rope with the, with the wheel. Okay, so you replace the all the webbing like normal, like a normal D-Rig. Exactly. And then you drop your tagline, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> I guess like tie it to the 11 side. 11 millimeter of rope. Yeah, and, like and then you drop that and pick it up. Cool. Yeah, or maybe we'll put some tension out. Because you don't want it to drop in the water without no. the bottles or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't lose the top. Because <laughs> you don't want to pull from the bottom. <laughs> no. Yay. Yeah. At the end of the day, the slack machine does not stay connected into the system. It is uh, available in order there needs to be a quick D-rig where it can pull the webbing in. You transfer the, the master point up here at the top of the pole down to a uh, intermediate 50 meter section of Y2K webbing that is already in the system. You basically take that webbing that's already embedded in it, connect it to the master point, soft release, they don't actually have a soft release on this, detention it, get it off the web lock, and then once it's being held up by the Kootenai carriage that's on the pulley system, um, it can you can raise and lower that, that fulcrum point that goes down to that slack machine, and they can just suck the webbing in if the winds got high and protect the webbing and just let a sacrificial rope get blown around. They also did this event a little bit earlier in the year where you don't have hurricane season because basically it was a hurricane that, it was the tail of a hurricane that blew the line apart last year. What I love about segmented high lines, as you all know I love segmented high lines, as all my pieces are in 50 meter sections now, is you can rig things like this without being sponsored. Um, you do want to make sure your loops are really well done, that you're not just doing them at home. If you need me to brake test some loops for you, I will, if you're not sure that they're safe. Because if they break, you're going to die. So uh, message me if you need me to do that for you. Um, but really, the sky is not the limit when uh, you do segmented lines. Or we're also going to be working on segmented nets. It's nice to have smaller bite-sized pieces that you can just combine in order to do projects like this.
This is a bitch to set up and a lot of work to walk. Therefore, you shouldn't highline.